I love asparagus and so does my family. This is our asparagus patch. It is four by eight and mm, I don't remember how many asparagus plants we have in here, but it's full basically. And we have some, uh, we have some Jersey nights and we have some purple passion. This is the third year being in the ground. And so this is our first year where we are going to harvest a full harvest, which means six weeks of harvesting everything that we want to that pops up. Um, I do leave some of the ones that uh, just seem a little too small. I'll leave them to go to ferns at this point, but mostly we've been picking uh, almost everything that comes up that we see. We intercrop with strawberries so that the strawberries could provide a ground cover and try and outcompete some of the weeds. It's been semi-successful. We need more strawberries to outcompete the weeds better, I think. But uh, strawberries are good to interplant with your asparagus because strawberries have very shallow roots and the asparagus roots are, are you know, six, eight, 12 inches underground. So their roots are on different planes of the soil and um, so they don't compete with each other because asparagus really doesn't like root competition, uh, which is why the strawberries are helpful to keep some of the competition of weeds out of the asparagus bed. Each year I've also seen the pest pressure uh, in, increase on our asparagus. And so I wanted to share with you what I've learned about how to identify the asparagus beetle so that you can look for it in your garden and protect your precious asparagus and save it all for yourself and your family. The beetle that I've been finding on my asparagus is actually the common asparagus beetle. There's another kind of asparagus beetle called the spotted asparagus beetle. Spots, but this one is red and black or blue with these, these white spots on it. And they're super tricky. And you see that one just fall to the ground so that you can't get it. You see them try and get away from my shadow and they see me. So these are easy to just remove from the plant. And if you want, you can have a bucket of soapy water that you drop them into. I don't worry about it that much. I work in the garden a lot. I remove pests a lot, so I just squish them. So you can see on this asparagus where the beetle has nibbled on the stem and kind of made this little indentation. And what that does is it actually makes the asparagus spear start to curve a little bit. So one way that you can look for where these might be in your asparagus patch is to look for these curved spears of asparagus. Also, they have wings and they fly. So they will fly away as well. Now, when the asparagus beetles are on your plant, they're going to be mating and they are going to be laying eggs. And these are the eggs. They're these kind of grayish eggs and they are oblong and they stick off at a 90 degree angle from the stem of the asparagus spear. And these I find it easiest to kind of scrape off with my thumbnail and they're much easier to get off the spears. They're really a pain to try and get off the, the ferns because the ferns are so tender that whenever I try and scrape them off, that they, um, and a lot of times it destroys the fern as well. Now those eggs in a few days will hatch into the larva. And these are the larva. They're kind of long and gray with a dark black head. And these will feed on the plant as well. And they can really defoliate your ferns, which prevents your asparagus from storing the nutrients it needs for next year. And after it has finished feasting on your asparagus ferns, it will drop to the ground in your asparagus bed and it will pupate and emerge as the adult form. I hope this helps you to learn about and recognize one of the pests that might be bothering your asparagus and gives you information that you need to help take care of your asparagus better and enjoy many a beautiful harvest. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.